showers and thunderstorms, and then uh, the rest of the time you're there, uh, it will be uh, in the upper 70s to low 80s. Correct. So So why do you hate to break it to me? Well, you're going to miss out on... Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to miss <laughs> out on is I'm not going to be able to watch the Iowa-Colorado <laughs> game. Well, that's... Yeah. I mean, there's no way you can plan that kind of... This wedding's been planned for a year, so... Well, you miss out on the, the uh, 50s and 60 temperatures with partly sunny skies. Hey, for the start of April, that's pretty good. It ain't really... No, it really It is. really is. Yeah. So uh, when we get yeah. back, we're going to have to put our porch back together because we've had everything covered with a yeah. tarp and stuff for the winter. We'll start grilling again. We haven't been grilling in a long oh, time. Oh, we have been. No, uh, we haven't. We've been broiling. Uh, Hawkfanatic.com brought to you by Patrick Eads and his staff. <laughs> Just Jesus. <laughs> Hold on, Karn. <laughs> Hawkfanatic.com. I bet it is. Hawkfanatic.com. Brought to you by uh, Deary Brothers Ford on Mormon Trek. Patrick Eads and his staff. Steve Anderson, Hawkeye Title and Settlement. Mike's E-Keys for Cars. GT Car and his crew at Suvel's Building and Remodeling. Suvel's Flowers, the home of 1-800-800-ROWS. The Midtown Family Restaurants. Hertzine and Stocker Jewelers, 101 South Dubuque Street, downtown Iowa City. Premier Automotive in North Liberty, the Oxyoke Inn in the Amanas, Streets Maintenance, and Dr. Lance Forbes, Diamond Dental in Cedar Rapids. Before we start, I have had to ban and block so many people uh, from West Liberty, from West Liberty, uh, West Virginia, and down south, so many men that are just last night started ganging up on our page, uh, ripping Caitlin, ripping the team, uh, ripping uh, Coach Bluter. I I don't get it. Well, she'll be okay. I just some TMZ Sports has a story that Ice Cube has offered Caitlin five million dollars to play in his big three, big three league. Yep, eight games uh, and two tournament games. Yeah, so ten games overall. Yeah. ten games, five million dollars. She gonna do it? Well, I don't know. Do we think it's? I, I, I don't don't know. That's it's her. Ice Cube. Does he have that kind of jack? Oh yeah, oh, of course. Yes, he's <laughs> worth millions. And I, <laughs> I don't sorry. think he would offer her that money. Oh, sorry, I was just joking. I don't no, have that it's money. it's Ice Cube. It's Ice Cube. He's a multi. <laughs> what's he worth? Huh? Do you think he's worth three hundred million? Uh, I mean, she could do that and play in the WNBA. So I wonder how many. Yes, yeah, she could. But how many teams would he have to pay? If it's called the Big Three, Ice Cube net worth one hundred and sixty oh, million. More than that. That's still a lot. I thought he was worth more than that. But the league's been around for a while. I mean, it's not like it's it, they've I mean, they've had games on national TV. I don't watch it. I'm not. Oh, I've never. It doesn't really interest. It's former NBA guys playing three on three. Yeah. yeah. Largely so Caitlin will have to play against guys. I'm not sure exactly how that would work. I mean. Well, it wouldn't go well for Caitlin, probably. Probably not. I mean, these are former NBA guys in their 30s, some 40s, whatever. Yes, I'm not right. sure. If I were her, though, I'd I'd stay away from Diddy. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Well, what's Diddy have to do with it? That uh, ain't good. They raided his house. I know, but what's that have to do with this? No, I just dropped it. I'd stay away from Diddy. Oh, okay. I, I thought, uh, Diddy, is Diddy part of the three-on-three three thing? No. I don't think no. so. Okay, not trying to I didn't know. No, Diddy's part of the... Uh, I don't think he and Ice Cube are like business associates, are they? I don't know. I think are they're they? actually on the opposite. Aren't, well, are isn't they? one West Coast and the other East? Well, then, then one would have shot the other one. Yeah, so, okay. No, I thought when you brought Diddy... No, Diddy, I just meant, brought Diddy. I'm sorry I did. No, I was just confused. I mean, you can... Yeah, I, I saw that. That's not... No, I was, uh, just trying his, to be topical. His lawyer just came out and said it's a hoax and it's a... Yeah. Uh, rigged investigation. Yeah. Fake news. That's what they said. You woke. So we'll see. Hello. Hello. Sorry I called in early, but I got to go you're, to church. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, well, what's the purpose of ripping somebody? I mean, why is West Virginia? Is that just sour grapes? Uh, well, yes. Yeah, so yes. I mean, I don't, I don't, all fan bases do it. I mean, yeah. it, it they is, do. It is what it is. Now, how did you think the girls played the other day? You think the aggressiveness of West Virginia kind of got them for a while? Oh yeah, you bet. Yeah, the game went. I'm, I'm not. I'm rarely right with my predictions, but this one I had pretty. Their their pretty strategy accurate. was foul as much as you can, and they'll all they'll call some of them. Mm-hmm. 
And that's what they, well, they played, then, played, played tough. I was shot a lot Colorado of free throws. Played yeah. the same way. Not quite. I think Colorado's better offensively. And they're bigger inside. And they're bigger inside. Yeah. Well, West Virginia couldn't shoot. No. No, that was that was a. I mean, they had thing. some girls that didn't even have the right form. They they just were terrible shooters, and that's why I thought Iowa eventually would win, would score enough points. And they did. Well, From the free throw line. They made one basket in the fourth quarter. Yeah. But they made well, we get more people uh, making baskets and we'll be okay. That's usually how it works. Well, yes. Yeah. That's that's very true. So what is your prediction for Saturday? My prediction is I'm not going to get to see the game, so. So you're going to sit there and swear. I'll probably have my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I think Iowa will win. I mean, I. Colorado, they're, they're a five seed for a reason. And it, um, and now, got some great wins. Do I think Iowa will beat LSU in the next round? I won't be as confident there. No. Well, UCLA could beat LSU. Yeah, they sure could. They could, but UCLA barely beat. UCLA was lucky to win their last game against a team that, who was it? I saw it was 67-63. Um, was it uh, Creighton? I think it was Creighton. Yeah, I'm Creighton's well, good, we, but we know about Creighton. Eh? Creighton's still not a power, is what I'm no. saying. That shows UCLA's vulnerable too. So, right now, the only team shown proving not to be vulnerable is South Carolina, but that's how they were last year when they went into the Final Four. But I saw a stat: Iowa had zero bench points. Yeah, they did a thing with the 16 teams left, and most of them had between like 10 and zero bench points. South Carolina had 51 <laughs> in their game. <laughs> Of course, they won by 40. Well, just, and yeah, that's part of it. Yeah, that's and they do have a lot of depth. Now, I saw last night I was watching an NIT game, and the coach stepped one step out on the floor, and he was hit with the technical. And that's the way it that, should be. Yeah, and so Mulkey, she, does she just intimidate them? That's the only reason why they don't. Yell at her because she stands the whole game there. She did. And in the championship game last year, a referee ran into her and didn't call a technical. And, and, and don't they do the same thing with Izzo? Yes. Yeah, and haven't we had this conversation you, like a hundred times? And then probably will again after. Yeah. 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 It, it is and what it is. We have a lot of things a hundred times. That's the world we're in, Karn. That's the way the world is. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Double standards. Okay, guys. Well. Let's hope the weather gets better because there's baseball games coming on. Well, well, there you go. Well, you're going to church. Pray for it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, guys, we'll yeah. see you. Thanks, Carl. Have a good day. So did Iowa play Illinois State yesterday? It was canceled. It was canceled? Due to weather. Yeah, that's, I mean, it was brutally cold. Yeah, it sure was. The wind, I walked from the dental lot to the football complex yesterday and froze my ass off. It was cold. Windy. Yeah. It was the wind was brutal. No, I was it under. was cold and damp in the house, and I had the heat on. And we went what like three days without any sun. Yeah. No, at least we got the sun out. What you gonna get to today? High thirties, low forties. Uh, forty three. Okay, that's and then. But with sun and no and wind, no wind, no it wind it's big, pretty good. Yeah, today will be bearable. I'd like to get some get some yard work done this week. Fifty five tomorrow, sixty four Friday. The trees don't know what to do. One no. day it's seventy, then it's like, do we do we bloom? I mean, it. The, I don't know. My, my they're trees, coming. They're coming, but it's, uh, I'm sure they're confused. I mean. Well, the wildlife in my yard, the chipmunks and, you know, they're, I don't know, acting odd. Well, I had plants coming up a month ago when it was warm in February, and that's not normal. But no. it's the world we live in. That's my answer for everything. It's the world we live in. <laughs> The r- officials can consp- the the argue the Twitter stuff between West Virginia and Iowa fans is just so well, this old. was really this was more than the, I mean uh, there were uh, for instance uh, posted a picture of uh, Coach Bluter and somebody said uh, there's a white woman that wouldn't want any coloreds around her. She's got two in her starting lineup. Well, I mean, but <laughs> well, one and a half. But why would you even make? Why? Why would you? Because it's Twitter, and they're just it's Facebook. Well, Facebook, it's social it's media. Facebook. But it's the same thing. It's just the I same. Know, but it just, and, and I mean, there were. It wasn't just our team should have won or anything like that. It was really cruel. See, a lot of those things are a lot of those are bots too. Yeah, I don't even pay Fire attention. I just, I just don't yeah. even pay attention to yeah, it. Just, just ignore it. I just bounced them off the page. I yeah, like it, that on I mean, they're mad. They thought the officials called way too many fouls on West Virginia. I mean, the officials did 
the best they could under tough circumstances. Uh, West Virginia fouls a lot. I mean, they, they sh- do. Now, Caitlin got away with a couple push-offs that didn't get called. I mean, there were two of them that, and that's, and they were obvious push-offs. They just didn't call them. Sometimes they're going to, but there were times where I thought Caitlin got hit and didn't get called. Caitlin so, got mugged all night long, and she does every game. But she does push off, too. Yes, she, she does. She had two big push-offs. The one she pushed the girl all the way down. I and thought she was, got called on one. She got called on one, but the one she got called on, I didn't think was near as noticeable as the two she didn't get called on. So, but no, officials are human. I don't think they the, – the narrative is that the TV networks are telling the officials, you've got to keep Clark in there for the ratings. And that's BS. That's yeah, not, do they want that? Sure. But, you you know, no, you don't – you're not, not going to manipulate the games by doing it that well, way. But that's the narrative. People don't understand, you know – it's just like when when we'll do our money wheel of crime contest and they go, uh, you're you know, some people it's rigged. Go, you're rigged. You know, I could I could go to jail. This is a federal thing. ESPN. Somebody would like rig something. They're going to federal prison. I mean, there's specific laws. You can't do that crap. Yeah. And people take it real seriously because they. They will be now. It would be hard to prove that. It would be hard to prove what was in an official's head when they made a call. Yeah. Were, I mean, I don't know, I, but that's just the narrative that's out there. That's just yeah. that, and I'm sure NBC or ESPN, not, they do want Clark to survive well, as long yeah. as possible. Yeah, they're probably deep down, they're probably rooting for Iowa in a way because she impacts TV ratings and it's a business. Well, and <laughs> like our first round game against Holy Cross had more viewers than any of the men's. Yeah. Well, and then they had over five million viewers just on TV. Now, I don't. They didn't. They said they haven't compiled the stream yet, but just on TV, over five million viewers yeah. to the West Virginia game. Yeah, and that's, that's that's good business. That's huge. So it's and it's going to continue. So yeah, they want to keep her in it, but they're not going to. There's no conspiracy. Just everybody falls no. on. Conspiracy. Everything's yeah. rigged. When rigged. things don't break their way, it's rigged. I mean. Yeah. And I don't mean to bring him in, but Trump has caused that mindset. That's just yeah, pretty much. He's pretty much turned anything that doesn't and go. And he's validated it. He, and anything that doesn't yeah. go your way, it's rigged. It's, it's a rigged. hoax. And yeah. I, I'm just so sick of it. God, I just get so sick of it. Yeah. This bridge thing. Oh, it's conspiracy, terrorist, <laughs> Biden thing. Lost power. Lost its ability to control, steer itself. Yeah. Ran into the bridge. The bridge yeah. couldn't take it, and boom, collapsed. That's what well, it was. And then you. Yeah, and then, I mean, they did. You can blame the captain or blame whatever. They lost power. I, yeah, they lost power, and the and they did a May Day, it saved, and they saved a lot yeah, of lives. Yeah, they did. But no, there were cars that were going to go over that thing. But you've got people power. like, what's her name, Laura? That uh, former, she used to be a legitimate reporter. She's saying it's a, uh, uh, some type of deep state. Well, I don't know what it was. Just Nancy nuts. Nancy Mace Just said, nuts. Uh, uh, where is uh, Biden's, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure? You know, it's And it was one of the bridges that, I mean, they've done like thousands and thousands of bridges uh, with the infrastructure. And they were going to, this was. Well, she's complaining that. about something that she didn't want to support anyway. Yeah. She, she, she was against it, it. But when it happens, then they can use right. it. And they for, just use it. Pivot. It's just ridiculous, man. Yeah. It's an unfortunate incident. I've seen the replay. I mean, it's. That thing was huge. Well, isn't it's it huge. amazing? Seriously, it's bad, but isn't it amazing they only lost seven lives? Well, it was one thirty in the morning. I know, but... That helped. It's... Imagine that happened during rush hour. Yeah. They would have lost. I mean, it would have been a disaster. Hopefully, if... Maybe thousands. Maybe a boat, a ship that big wouldn't be coming in during rush hour. It's, I don't know what the rules this are. This car went in to the freaking river, and one guy in the car is seriously injured, and then the other guy, they want to take him to the hospital. He goes, No. You know, <laughs> I'm going home. Yeah, he swam out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's about four, it's about fifty feet deep there where they're down there diving now yeah. through all it that wouldn't be good. Mess. No, it's an unfortunate. It's going to impact things too. It's going to it's, it's going to impact gonna, supply chains. It's going to affect yeah. us here, and it'll become a political yes, issue. Yes, it will. The Republicans and, will use it to blame Biden, and, and that's what's going to happen. Yeah, Trump will be all over this thing. Well, well, they'll say that if Trump was president, that boat would not have crashed into the bridge because it would have been afraid of Trump. That will be their narrative. <laughs> that will. Well, um, it'll affect. I mean, if you were expecting anything from, you know, the other continents uh, on Amazon. I mean, that's one of the biggest warehouses they have. That thing was coming from Singapore, wasn't it? Yeah. And it, they showed, 
an illustration. They had a 57-story building. This ship is taller if you stood it vertical than a 57-story building. Yeah. That's how big it is. Oh, it's, it's huge, and it's, and it's super heavy. And wonder why maybe the, I wonder why they couldn't maybe divide that in half, have two ships carry those things in. To where you don't have this big, cumbersome, massive thing where, you, I mean... I don't I'm know. Sure, it's just all seemed a little. Just seemed a little bit too much. Cost, but cost what do I management. Know? Oh, I'm sure it is cost management. But now look at it. I mean, yeah. Well, they showed yesterday they have to take a specific route, and it has to be exactly dead on. And if the ship veers, any well, yeah, especially way, on yeah. that big. That's why I'm saying make yeah. them smaller. Yeah. Give them a little more room for air. But no, it's an unfortunate. It'll be interesting to see if it impacts our groceries at all. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it will. It maybe it will. But it may impact packages from Amazon, car parts, things like that. Yeah. It could. Did you see the other story out there? The Was it the Utah team that had to stay up at the Idaho Panhandle? Yeah. And had to face, I mean, it's very racist up there. I mean, that. Um, and they moved them. The NCAA moved them. Um, they moved their, I don't know why they're making them stay. Th- they're in the Spokane district. I'm sorry, I didn't region. see this story. They're in the Spokane region, and they're playing 30, they're staying 35 they, miles away. What's, I don't even know how to Creve pronounce Creve Is, is that, Isn't it? No, it's Creve Corps, Missouri. It's something similar to that, but it's Coeur not. Coeur d'Alene? I think that's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe. And it's up it. in the Idaho Panhandle, yeah. which is just white supremacist heaven. They were going to a restaurant, leaving their hotel, walking as a team, and two or three pickup trucks came up, revved their engines, and started hurling the N-word at them. And you then know. waited for them after they ate, and when they were coming back, three or four more trucks came, hurled, and did the same thing. And of course, right away, there were people underneath the comments were like, "Prove it, prove it. This is this is." Um, they they were saying it was a hoax, and it was you know plants that were doing it. Uh, and it, but no, it was that they moved the team though. Yeah, that's well, unfortunate. They have video. Uh, yeah, I've seen it. Well, the video I saw didn't show anything. It just showed the players well, walking. There's a, some TV station had video because they were following the teams. They did to the other team, too, that they were going to play. Yeah, so that's playing. just so, – you, know, you shouldn't be putting teams in the Idaho panhandle for – I mean, it's just incredibly racist up there. It is. Our, our band played there uh, one time, and it was played at a very elite resort. And, yeah, it was uh, blindingly white. Yeah, yeah. People think it's only racism in the South. Well, that's one of the not most true. Well, yeah. Have you been yeah. to New Jersey? Well, Boston is extremely racist. Long Island? Yeah. It's all over the place. Yeah. You know, yeah, but so. but now people some people would be listening to us right now and roll their eyes and say we're just woke and I'm whatever. Woke. But if you if you acknowledge racism you're woke. But no, that was an unfortunate incident. The NCA needs to learn from that. And teams shouldn't be thirty five miles from their no. That's ridiculous. Don't put it in Spokane if there's no, I guess there was some other event going on there, like a volleyball tournament well, where then, the, the hotels were. Then don't put teams. This is the NCAA tournament. Don't put teams there. And hopefully that will never happen again. But, yeah, that I could not. And the coach was really emotional at her press conference. She, she just couldn't believe that they experienced that. But that's the world we live in, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's, that's sad. That's ridiculous. It is, but it's yeah. it's BS. So, um, and what team was that? Utah, I believe. Yeah. The Utah women's no, team. No, it was the Utah. Yes, the Utah women's team. As for the Utah men's team, they play. Um, don't they play VCU? Re- v- is it tonight? I think it is. Yeah, I watched that. Indiana State's now going to Hinkle. They're going to take that arena over. The- they're going to do what the best way to show the NCAA that you blew it is to win the NIT. Yep. They got a chance now. They're two wins away from doing it. I watched their game last night against Cincinnati. They were down. That was a good game. That was a really good game. Uh, two, the two or three NIT, in that Ohio State-Georgia game, was a, I watched some of that. Did C.J. Frederick play for Cincinnati? No, I don't think he did. I don't even see if he was. He's probably hurt. No, I think he is. Yeah, I don't, um, um, I don't, don't remember him being in the game. But it was they were competitive games. I've actually these couple of NIT games that I watched have been better than some of the NCAA mm-hmm. games that I've yeah. watched. And I, I watched some of Ohio State's game last uh, night. Yeah, I don't give Georgia credit. They went in there and won. Yeah, that was a good win. Georgia was nineteen and sixteen, I think. So, um, but yeah, you're going to have Indiana State playing at Hinkle Fieldhouse now, and their fans are going to take that place over. And to me, winning the NIT in your home state in front of your fans. I know it's not the same as getting beat in the first round of the NCAA tournament, but it's still pretty good. 
you could argue that it, in the long run it might even be better. Uh, I, t- I think it was great for Woody and Gazelle. I think team. it was too. Now, um, shifting over to Iowa, not surprisingly, Tony Perkins um, in the portal. Now, Fran's statement made it sound like he was just pursuing professional opportunities. If that was the case, then he wouldn't, he wouldn't have to be in the portal. I think he, Tony's hedging his bets. Once, if somebody offers him a bag of money, you know, uh, or he to may just, or he may go play overseas. And he might. I, I don't think he's NBA ready right now. I don't. I don't either. And maybe he thinks he can do the G League. Well, I think the main thing is Tony. Just he's been here four years. He wants a change. Uh, and, and I don't see anything wrong with no. that. And, and I don't think Fran sees anything wrong with that. And Patrick announced on his Instagram. It was a weird. He didn't ever say that. It was basically a kind of a farewell message to fans without really saying farewell. I don't know if you saw it. I did. Uh, yeah, I mean, but he never really said I'm not. You know, it's, uh, he just. It, I don't know. It was just kind of weird. But I interpreted it as this is his way of saying farewell. He's going to move on and try something different. So I mean, there's going to be. I mean, you lose that. You lose Cricky. You lose Bowen. That's four pieces that was four major parts of the rotation when the season started this it's going to be an interesting off season as far as roster building it is and he's going to have to get some pieces from the portal whether he wants to or not he's got to oh he will i mean he's going to have to i mean there's so many to choose from but it seems like the really good ones man when they get in there they don't last very long like this i saw this guard from Pepperdine, I think it was. Patrick IG years, average like 18. Boom, he's already going to Gonzaga. Yeah. He was in the portal for like eight hours, it seems like. And um, so it'll be interesting. There's a lot to choose from. I just wonder where Iowa is in the pecking order. I don't know. Iowa State already got a transfer. Dijon, six foot eleven center, who's pretty 13 and 8, I think. He's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Iowa State's in a position right now to where they can almost be selective in their – that cause when you're as hot as they are right now – People want to go, just like with the yep. Iowa women. That's right. The Iowa women have more five stars looking at the program now than I can ever remember, and that's because they're hot right now. They're a brand with Caitlin and what have you, and and maybe some of these, like Addie Deal, look at, hey, I mean, Caitlin's going to be gone, but we're going to keep this going here. We're going to we're going to build off what she did, and they can use that as a recruiting tool. But, but yeah, Fran's going to have to do some work in the portal. He knows that. He's been pretty good. If you, if you go all the way back to Bakari Evelyn, uh, and then Philip uh, and Bryce Cartwright. Bryce even. Cartwright. Yeah, I know the cart, the cart, the portal wasn't around then. He was junior college. Right. But still, when Fran brings in a piece, a veteran piece, it's it's worked. I mean, I thought Ben Cricky for the most part was pretty solid. This he year. was, and Rebracha was. Rebracha was, was good. I mean, nobody's perfect, but they were both solid starters who came in and were key contributors, and that's what you want. So, yeah, this is going to be an interesting. Off season, it'll be interesting to see where Patrick and Tony end up too. I hope Tony doesn't end up at like Indiana, but who knows? That's there's a rumor. I, there's always a list, you know, that people say uh, Tony Perkins has heard from. Okay, and Indiana was right in the middle of. Oh, it. I'm sure. I've heard that's uh, a ma- possibly a major. Yeah, I love the one. So and so's heard. And then they list like thirty schools. <laughs> 30. Right? Yeah. I mean, well, and it might be true. In most of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it's true. I don't know why you would lie, but uh, but yeah, that's just it's just a crazy so process. So that you now. can say, hey, I was right. Yeah. Uh, by the way, ten o'clock this morning, sirens are going to uh, uh, go off uh, throughout the communities. It's a statewide tornado drill, so yeah. there is no tornado. This- I wouldn't the sirens be, con- will yeah, be going look off. at the sky. You can see that my, uh, people- my dogs used to howl during those things. Yeah. Big time, they would just howl. Yeah, well, he doesn't dig stuff like that. They didn't like it either, so they would howl though. Yeah, or the, and they would howl to certain music too. Like if I played a couple of the Pink Floyd songs with the dogs barking on. Yeah, when howling, heard, man. How many times are you gonna listen? To when I um, <laughs> I do though. When dogs at the end, there's the barking. They'd hear it, and I'd turn the speakers up. Really, their ears would perk up, and then they'd start oh, and then they'd, they'd try to out howl each other. We had a dog that when people, when I was a kid, when people in the neighborhood would die. He would howl? He would howl. And there's dogs that do that. And I mean, you know, it's just weird. But I could make, I used to be able to make them howl. Does Wapsie do a lot of howling? No. I could make them howl. She does plenty of barking. <laughs> Buddy barked a lot. Lakota didn't bark much at all. Buddy would bark. Um, but, um, but yeah, they used to love to howl and that's part of their breed too. Yeah. I mean, especially if Lakota had either coyote or wolf in, wolf in him, that would be even more. Have you ever seen those videos? Like a pack of wolves, they all just start howling at the yeah. same time. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty hilarious seeing that stuff. So, but, 
But, yeah, and then yesterday we, of course, had the spring football press conference. And, hey, gee, the offense is going to look different and everything's going great. <laughs> Have we ever heard that before? I, you know, he emphasized – I thought he emphasized a, a little more than normal that the offense is going to look different. Oh, he, well, that's what he said, but yeah. – he said, I mean, this is just like Groundhog Day. And I'm not knocking. My my column was, I'll believe it when I see it. That's and, all and I'm going to say. fair enough. That's where yeah, I am right yeah. now. And that's not a knock on Ference. It's not a knock on Lester. But by God, we've been through this so many times. And so many people take the bait and just uh, changes, changes. Look at this. And then it comes out. And then boom, it's the same well, thing. Well, and I mean, they said the same thing last year. Oh, we've really made some changes. There was nothing. And it wasn't just them saying it. Media were saying it, too. Nothing. I mean, in fairness to Kirk, he says stuff, and then we spin it the way we want to spin it in hopes of getting clicks and whatever. I mean, but he did say, when it, yes, it'll look different. All I'm saying is I'll believe it when I see it. And what he said, we're imp- implementing something new from Tim's offense every day. Yeah, of course. And But you know what that could be? That could be making a subtle release move different from the line of scrimmage. I, I, I think a lot of fans think all of a sudden, man, this is going to be just basketball on grass, downfield. It's still the same receivers, guys. It's still the same quarterbacks. I mean, you can, I mean, it's, I, I don't know. I mean, it's still the same offensive line. I just don't know how it's going to look that different. We have not heard you, uh, Suter, say anything about it. it can't be worse. Oh, and you're, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> But I mean, the the good news, bad news is the the same offensive line is back. And when I and when I'm talking different, what I hope happens because I hope I'm wrong in this case. I've been saying that. And I remember when Greg Davis took over. Man, you saw what he did with Vince Young. It's going to be. No, it wasn't. It was even worse. It became even more predictable and more horizontal. Very horizontal. And then when Brian took over, oh, he's going to get Kirk to think outside the box. It's going to be great. It's way more changes, aggressive. Changes, changes, Then Boudmeyer came in and some people in the media, this is the sign of change. Nothing changed. So we'll see. But what um, I hope happens, I was thinking they've got those five running backs. Why not move one or two of those, like Kamari Moulton, or Terrell Washington, move one of them to like a slot receiver. Of course. And then get them the ball like you get Caleb Brown the ball. Those are the kind of changes I hope happen. Yes. The offense absolutely. doesn't have to change, but change the personnel, put them in different matchup situations. Maybe that's what Kirk is saying. And that would be different. So, But that's what I – I mean, to me, Terrell Washington and Kamari Moulton look like they're pretty good. They, they look do. like they can make people miss. Get them the ball in space and figure out a way to let them play instead of just having them sit behind – um, Caleb Johnson and um, LaShawn Williams, I just want to get more skill players out on the field to try to get them in space. That's what I hope they're doing. And the thing I saw that, that encouraged me is that, that there was a lot of motion uh, being instilled in almost every play that they're doing. And to me... Where did you see? Are you at practice? No, that's it was uh, from... I, um, well, I, Kirk said that. Okay, well, I was there. I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, I to me, that goes in one ear and out the other. I mean, they do a lot of motion. They do five wideouts. I mean, they do all this stuff, and when we see it not succeed, it sounds so much better when we talk about it. But they do. I mean, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I just think that, we'll just see. I just think we read so much into everything Kirk says. We're so desperate to believe that something's going to change and get better that we just – kind of create our own narratives and yeah, that's and, for sure. and i'm just uh, i'm not going to do that this i time. don't disagree with you and there are some people in the media that kind of take whatever kirk says hook line and sinker and push it because they know that's what the fans want to see in there and they want to push this change narrative and but i don't think you have to make drastic changes i just think you need to put better players in better matchup situations and and make it easier to complete passes i mean I, Everything just looks so hard. Yes, and like I said, I just I like Terrell Washington and I like Kamari Moulton. I think they look like they're good football yep. players. But if they can only just play running back, then I mean, I to me, you see so many good schools that will recruit running backs, and next thing you know, they're playing wide receiver or maybe a wide receiver. And next thing you know, he's playing cornerback. Or Iowa does a lot of position changes, but it seems like they do more on defense, and it seems like they rarely do position switches with running backs. Seems like you're either a running back or you're not. At and it, Iowa. it just it doesn't seem like we utilize our running backs enough in the past. No, I hope they either. do more. I hope they do more screen passes. Yeah, me too. And maybe that's the kind of things that Lester is going to bring in. And everyone's talking about the run pass, the RPOs. 
I, you know, look, RPOs with Cade McNamara. I mean, are you a little worried about that? I mean, I'm a little worried about everything. About I mean, Kirk. I mean, Kirk said they hope to have him 100 percent by June, which is what that's still three months from now. And um, but he said, I mean, he's not going to do anything this spring other than stationary throwing. So they're not going to get anything accomplished this spring with him no. playing. That's a concern. Well, the, the quarterback position in general is a, a big. Well, big then the depth concern. chart has Deacon Hill listed above Lane as and when we all tweeted out the depth chart yesterday, oh God, that was the first reaction is this is ridiculous. Just because Hill's listed above him right now doesn't mean that's what it is. If Lane as outperforms Deacon Hill this spring, he will be the backup. Yes. I I'm predicting that he will be the backup. But if he's not the backup, in fairness to the coaches, that means that Lane is the way I would interpret that is he's not developing as a passer. He's obviously a runner. He's a better runner than any of the other two Oh, no, he looked great for the one quarter. But he, he did not look good as a passer at all. He looked horrible. Yeah, so we'll see. And if you're going to be the Iowa quarterback, you have to be able to throw. The way the offense is built at Iowa, I mean, you've got to be a better thrower than you've got to be a better runner. So we'll see. But other than that, there really were no – there's not much new on defense because most of the defense is back. And the offensive line, I mean, Kirk was asked about, you know, the loss of Proctor. How does that hurt? And Kirk's like, you know – we didn't. He was never here, really. He never practiced with us, so you can't really say we lost him because we never really had him. And I agree with Kirk yeah. on that. I I agree with him. They never had. I mean, we've all assumed that Proctor was going to move right into left tackle, and then that would move um, Mason Richmond into one of the guard positions and what have you. And but it was never meant to be. So I think Kirk's message yesterday was move on, and I think that's the right approach. Yeah, that's really too. the only thing you can do is just move on. I, I in fact, I don't even want to hear about him. You know, he's plays for Alabama. Don't want to hear gonna, about their other tackle either. I'm, I'm going to come in with five minute Caden Proctor updates every day for the next year. <laughs> By the way, yeah, I, I just you just move on. Just move on. I don't wish anything ill will. No, I will say I don't think he handled this very well. I don't think the advice he's getting it, it's not a good look. To no, not at it all. was not no. a good look. I, he was getting some bad advice. I think uh, this is a major uh, port for them uh, getting automobiles and uh, automobile parts, and uh, they got to figure out something else because this bridge ain't going to be rebuilt. I mean, it's for years. Take, you know, at least two. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, at least two. Yeah, not a good thing. No. But what is a good thing? Yeah. Let's take a break. What time is it? I don't have my glasses. 22. On. Oh, all right. We're good. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Patrick Eads, owner of Deary Ford, Iowa City. If you're looking for a great deal on a new truck or SUV, Deary Ford is here for you. With model year closeout pricing on all remaining new 23 F-150s plus 1.9% financing for 66 months plus $2,000. Save thousands on 24 Bronco Sports with 1.9% for 66 months plus $2,000. So when you want a great vehicle and an awesome buying experience, Deary Ford is here for you in Iowa City or online at Deary Ford. One eight hundred eight hundred rose. One eight hundred eight hundred rose. Your FTD florist is the only number you need to know to send flowers anywhere in the country or Canada from anywhere in the country. One eight hundred eight hundred rose. It's so easy. Just remember one number. One eight hundred eight hundred rose. Your FTD florist. One eight hundred. 800 rolls. Remember. For a gift that your loved one will treasure for a lifetime, find it at our family-owned jewelry store in Iowa City, Hertine and Stocker Jewelers. We can show you diamond engagement rings, colored stones, fashion jewelry, and watches. Our jewelers are on site, so we can design jewelry for that special person in your life. We are Hertine and Stocker, serving Iowa City and the surrounding area for three generations. Hertine and Stocker Jewelers, downtown Iowa City, and HertineandStockerJewelers.com. As for Willa, Terry, Tim, or Kate. One of us is always there. Don't wait for an emergency to get a backup for your car keys. Unlike the olden days, car keys have gotten extremely complex. Mike's E-Keys for Cars can generate the most technically advanced automotive keys that are on the market today. For spares and lost keys, Mike's E-Keys for Cars can produce most conventional transponder, high security, and remote head keys. Mike's E-Keys for Cars will keep you on the road. Call 319-330-9185 and schedule an appointment today. Don't wait until it's too late. Call 319-330-9185 319-330-9185 today. Are you tired of living in a home that doesn't quite meet your needs? 
then it's time to call the experts at Streets Maintenance. Their team of skilled professionals specializes in renovations and remodeling, transforming your home into the space you've always dreamed of. From kitchen bath remodels to complete home renovations, no job is too big or too small. Streets Maintenance will work with you every step of the way to ensure your vision becomes a reality. So don't wait any longer. Call Streets Maintenance to schedule your consultation at 400-4483. Let's start building your dream home today. On an athletic team, you need team players, good athletes, superior equipment, and the best coaches available. In real estate, you need to have a good title and settlement team at your disposal. Hi, this is Steve Anderson. Whether you're buying, selling, or refinancing, you need quality title and settlement services. Consider the team at Hawkeye Title. Give us a call at 351-8600. Hawkeye Title and Settlement, the team you love, the people you trust. Don't let just anyone take care of your smile. At Diamond Dental, you can expect compassion, expertise, and a personalized care plan to protect your teeth for life. With more than 30 years of combined experience, Dr. Forbes and his staff are prepared to tackle even your toughest dental problems, leaving your smile healthy and sparkling. Diamond Dental offers a full range of general and cosmetic dentistry, as well as dental treatment options for snoring and sleep apnea. It's never too early to start thinking about what's best for your smile. Schedule an appointment today by calling 319 390-3703 390-3703 or visiting the office at 5815 Consul Street Northeast, Suite D1 in Cedar Rapids. You can also visit DiamondDentalPC.com for more information. Dr. Forbes is a proud sponsor of the Hawkeye Wrestling Club and the Inner Circle. Let the Diamond Dental team provide superior care for your entire family. Car won't go into gear? Call Premier. Premier Automotive in North Liberty offers full-service mechanical auto repair, in addition to being Eastern Iowa's most trusted name in auto body repair. Use Premier for all your auto repair needs, brakes, oil changes, air conditioning, diagnostics, transmissions, or preventative maintenance. Whether you hit a deer or your car won't go into gear, see Premier Automotive in North Liberty. When you go to a family restaurant, you want three things. One, a wide selection of breakfast, lunch, and dinner items. Two, you want those selections to be affordable and delicious. And three, you want to be treated like family. You get all three at the Midtown Family Restaurant. Breakfast items available anytime the doors are open. Legendary tenderloins, onion rings, and hot roast beef sandwiches. And special ribeye and shrimp nights. Daily specials at each location. And no matter if you're coming in solo or with a group of 20, you get the same special family treatment. The Midtown Family Restaurants at Court and Scott streets and at the walmart plaza on highway one west follow them on facebook or at midtownfamily.com the family's waiting for you. gt car owner of Supel's building and remodeling has been offering unmatched service and quality for over 25 years the trained professionals at Supel's building and remodeling will install and guarantee the products used in any job no matter how big or small they also stand behind their work and offer no nonsense exceptional customer service from design to completion and beyond whether it's a simple window replacement or a major house edition. You'll have the confidence that Suples Building and Remodeling is committed to quality. Visit suples.net or call them today at 319-337-2246. 84 years of preparation, the wait is over. The Oxyokin's brand new book, Our Recipes, Our Story is on sale now. 90 pages in full color, 67 recipes and our unique history for only 24.99. Get yours while they last at the Oxyokin. Available soon by mail order along with our current serving hours at oxyokin.com oxyokin in the heart of a man from the hurting and stalker studios in the heart of the hawkeye nation this is the mighty 1630 kcjj iowa city hurting and stalker jewelers making memories making It is going to be sunny and a little cooler today, but not nearly as windy as it was yesterday. We'll get to 45 for a high this afternoon. The wind out of the west at around 5 to 15-ish here through the day. Tonight, partly cloudy, 27. Tomorrow, sunny. High back to 56. Then on Friday, some sun in the morning. Clouds in the afternoon with some rain. Maybe a few thunderstorms Friday night. Our high on Friday, 65. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable on the mighty 1630 KCJJ. Temperature now, 30.
KCJJ Weather. Brought to you by Plum Supply. Plum Supply Kitchens and Baths. Your home never looks so beautiful. It's not even good. We're back. <laughs> okay, this is a, a TMZ update for Ice Cube is speaking out on the offer to Caitlin Clark. Hoax rigged. Woke. Is that what he's saying? Caitlin is a general, a, a generational athlete who can achieve tremendous success in the big three. <laughs> Uh, we're also pointing out the league has a track record of breaking barriers with female coaches like Nancy Lieberman and Lisa Leslie. Yes. With, with our offer, Caitlin can make history and break down even more barriers. Big Three founder thinks his organization would be a better alternative for WNBA athletes to make money during the off season. I agree with that. So that's $500,000 a game. And to yeah. not have to go overseas to play, I'd say she should do it. I, I mean, just don't know. Are how they... do you pay the, pay those salaries? Well, then how does she compete against a former NBA point guard? I mean, what if she's playing against guys that have been retired? I mean, I don't know. That's going to be. I know she's great, but I mean, five million to play eight regular season games and possibly two, two playoffs. Playoff possibly, so her team might not make the playoffs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she would also get. In addition, substantial additional compensation for merchandising and sponsorships. And the big three would allow her to play in the WNBA. Why wouldn't she do that? I, I, I yeah, mean, I, I would do it. I, I, well, Unless I, she's playing against men. But I think that's what it is. I don't. That's. I think they're going to pit her against former NBA players. I mean, I'm just not sure how that would work. Unless there's a woman... Are there a bunch of women players in the on three? I don't follow it. Closely. I mean, I don't think I've never seen the times I've watched on TV. Caitlin's great at getting to the rim, but if Shaq's in there, she's probably not going to be real well, successful. Well, Shaq won't be in there, but some former. I'll NBA, let you know yeah, what I yeah. mean. Yeah. Well, or how will she be getting by, like a Gilbert Arenas or somebody? The guard. I mean, I, that's what doesn't make sense to me. And that may she be would some... be the first female player in the big three. Ah. And she, but she's grown up. He says, but she's grown up practicing against male players. So it's she's grown up. Her. She grew up playing against little boys. Well, yeah. I mean, okay. not against NBA I, players. I think you got it. The players in these on three games are former NBA players that are still hanging on to their youth in some ways. They're not good enough to still be in the NBA because they're old. Older and what have you, but they're still men, and I don't know how that would work. Well, here's the potential. The potential hitch is that the big three and the, and the NBA, which operates the WNBA, have bad blood. Uh, the U.S. Department of Justice launched an antitrust investigation last year into allegations the NBA was making. So it is rigged and yes. a hoax and woke and deep state. Uh, <laughs> launched an antitrust investigation into allegations. The WNBA is making moves to crush Big Three success. <laughs> now it's silly. We reached out to Caitlin's camp. Uh, we'll let you know as soon as we hear. Should about we try it. to get Cube on? Yeah. Imagine Karn talking to Cube, <laughs> asking Cube who he thinks is going to win. Cube, do you think they'll win? The Hawkeyes <laughs> will win tomorrow. I don't know. Well, that's an interesting proposition because. I, I and how hard would the men be playing again? Would they play belly up? Nope, you're not getting that logo three. I'm going to shove it. Right. Would it be that? Where you know she's just frustrated and angry. I, I mean, <laughs> if if she's got a six eight athlete, Tracy McGrady at forty, yeah. he's going to block the logo three. <laughs> he could, he's going to block the logo and, three, and she's not going to drive by a former thirty five year old NBA point guard. I don't think. They don't care. They just want the publicity. No, I know they do. The brand. But I think if you're Caitlyn's camp, you're yeah. you're picturing you're... her there doing it, and you're wondering, eh, is this the best thing well, for she's us? She's going to look like a toy. And I know we all could say we need five million dollars. Yes, we do. But Caitlyn will be okay financially if she doesn't do this. Yeah. So yeah, this will. Be I kind of uh, now that I think about, it, I kind of hope she doesn't do it. Well, it's like Billy Barty would be. Playing. It, it's a sideshow. <laughs> it's a sideshow. It thing. is. It is sort yeah. of. Yeah. And I don't a, like. That. I think. I don't like that. Yeah, and I, I'm seeing more and more stuff on social media, people wanting her to take the next step and start competing against men. No, we're not going there. No. I mean, she's well, not. Yeah, they're completely the different sports. I know it's the and same sport. And yet they don't want uh, men uh, becoming women. And competing. Well, I mean, I saw uh, <laughs> these were actually not just bots. and There was a legitimate 
debate going on about whether Caitlin's game translates to the NBA. And I'm just like, people, no. I mean, it's just, you're being nuts. Yeah. I mean, you can't do that. That's just. Uh. Hello. Hi. Yeah, I think, I don't think it would ever happen. I've never heard of this thing, and now I have. So I guess the strategy is working that way. Plus. Yeah, good point. He, are they using a men's basketball? She doesn't shoot with a men's basketball. That's a good point, Oh, too. boy, that's a great that's point. That's a good point. No, they, I'm sure they'll use a men. You imagine those former NBA players wanting to have a – what the hell is this? <laughs> you know? I mean, <laughs> you imagine Shaq like a with a smaller no, ball. And, and folks, <laughs> if Caitlin uses a regular size basketball, she's not going to be near as effective as she and is. And it could the affect her shooting. I don't know. Do the WNBA use a smaller ball? Is that – I don't know. I don't know either. Yes, they do. Do they? Okay. So, yeah, there's so many things that would go into it. Also, you don't want her to get hurt, of course. No, no I think that's the thing. She could get hurt. and I, She doesn't need the money. She's got plenty of money. No, I'm with you. Not do it. I, I hope she doesn't. Now, I give Cube credit. This is a good marketing strategy. He's a marketer, but I do kind of agree. There, I don't want her to become like the circus. For, you know what I mean? No. The, the exhibit for them because – this on three, the competition, It's I've watched those games. These are former NBA players that are still good enough to make some money playing on. These games are on national TV. The uh, WNBA ball is one inch smaller. That's significant. You no, know, that's That huge. is huge. That's a huge difference. I remember when I used to play basketball, I'd hold, you know, you'd have the ball for men's games. You, you take the, it's a huge, I, I could barely shoot the women's ball because all your muscle memory and your touch and everything changes because yeah. of the size of the ball. That's big. No, it's. I, I hope she doesn't. Yeah, do it. it would be a freak show. Yeah, I, I hope Basically. she does. But I don't think. I, and I agree with you. But I don't think Ice Cube's like sinister. And he's a businessman. He's no, trying to get he's his. Trying to get, and I, that's the, push the brand. And I get it. I get it. And this is the hottest and hopefully if thing. She, if, and yes, and if she does decide to s- not to do it, hopefully he won't, he won't lash out. He'll, I think yeah. he'll understand. Ice Cube's not. Yeah, he's he's a good actor. He's I mean he's a showman. He's he, a real. He's really he's talented. A good actor. And he was great. In he's Boys a promoter. The he's a record producer. Yep. He's. I doubt that that hundred fifty million I read is accurate. is accurate. I think it's low. What's what's I Diddy worth? What's Diddy worth? Well, is it Diddy or is he Puffy or is he Puff Daddy or yeah, he's uh, right puffy now cl- he's screwed. Well, um, he's innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, I know, but I mean his brand well, is well. Yeah, this doesn't help. Being I mean, charged well, like, this doesn't for help. this is, a, is I mean they raided both his screwed. homes. Yeah, but boy, he's got a nice home on each yeah. co- well, each I coast. Mean, this is R. Kelly territory. Yes, if it turns out to be true. Yeah, yeah. It's is not, he worth is he worth close to a billion? Because, man, those homes they showed yesterday. Did he? He's got a palatial estate in L.A. and One in my... billion. Okay, wow. Think about that. Worth a billion dollars. That explains the 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 homes. But, yeah, no, that I mean, they had guns drawn. They were, I mean, that was some serious stuff. I mean, he's, you know, he's been selling merchandise and Oh, he's clothing. another great businessman. And yeah, this, yeah, it's not just. Record no. Or anything. What is he now? What's his name now? What does he go by now? Is he just Diddy? He was Puff Daddy. <laughs> I just looked up Diddy, and it comes up Diddy Net Worth. He's Sean Combs. Well, I know that's his name. He and was Sean Puffy. He, he was Sean Puffy Combs. Then he yeah. turned into Puff Daddy. Then he was P Diddy, and now is he just Diddy? And then what's he going to be? Just did? Says Diddy. Eventually, he'll be did. He'll be done. You better hope he ain't done. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, yeah, here's one that's, uh, yeah, he's at worth a billion. It'll be interesting to see what Caitlin says out at the NCAA press conferences, because she'll be asked about this, and rightfully so. It's a fair question uh, to ask. Yeah. I'd be interested to see how she handles it. <coughs> and a lot of people have been lashing out, saying she's bad for the sport because of her her attitude, but I don't you agree. Know, she's not. She's not perfect. And I'm writing something right now. She's a demanding, perfectionist, highly emotional, and sometimes that backfires against her. But the good still far outweighs the bad with what she brings but to the sport. Does it backfire against her because men can do that, and it doesn't well, backfire that's part of against it. them? But. A man who complains as much as she does would be, I think, would be called out. She, you have to admit, she complains a lot to the officials. Yes, she does. She yeah. does. And I don't, I'm a huge fan. I love her family. She does complain a lot yes, to the she officials. Yes, she does. Yeah. 
She does. But no, you're right. A man is allowed to complain more because that's a man. Uh, competitive. You know, women are supposed to be more soft. They're not supposed to be competitive and fiery. That's BS. She can do that. I'm just saying that's about the only thing she does wrong is she does let people get under her skin. She does try to converse too much with the officials. But think about all the other stuff she does, the hours she spends signing autographs. She's an academic. She does everything in the classroom, right? I mean, at, nobody's perfect, and that's kind of what I'm writing about. She's a human. She's vulnerable in some ways. Her biggest weakness is her emotion. She lets it get to her. That's also part of what But that's her also great. part of what makes her a uh, great competitor, yeah. too. So you got to give a little bit to get. But I – but. I mean, I don't think she's as bad as what a lot of people are I making I thought she out. was better the, the other night. I, I And she does. I don't think she's ever played in a game where she hasn't questioned at least a call. That's no. just who she is. And they've had to work with it. She's gotten better. But, no, I think she was I think she was um, better in the game, too, because I think she saw what she did against Holy Cross and was, I don't know. If well, that she, will translate. It will translate. It may not in collegiate, but it will translate better in the WNBA because that's what they, that's what they, they kind of need the, you know, for lack of a better description, the wrestling aura of, you know, these women are fighting and these women, you know, it's. Yeah, but the WNBA yeah. officials won't put up with her bitching and moaning at their calls. Yeah. They'll call technicals on her, and she'll know that. She'll yeah. she'll learn. Right. And in fairness to her, she hasn't had a lot of technicals called on her. I do think sometimes she's having a discussion with an official, and we see it from we see it from afar and think she's yelling or screaming. They she may be at okay. They may be having a detailed conversation on what was the call, why was it called. We don't know because she's so emotional. We may just assume, oh, that's a call, suck, blah blah blah. But you notice. She doesn't get a lot of technicals when she has, and maybe people say, well, that's just because she's Caitlin. She's above. No, I've seen her get teased. Yeah. You know, so, but but that's to me about the only thing, but I'm seeing so many. Like, I saw this tweet yesterday. He had four different videos. He had put in this one tweet of her showing her emotion, and this is bad for the game. She's not, and I just, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. And of course, if I write something, people outside of Iowa, oh, this is just a hometown hack, which, you know, you, you can't win is. in that situation. But I, I just think that she is too emotional at times, but also that same emotion is what fuels her inner drive to compete. So, And you just got to take the bad with the good, especially when the good is so good. That's how I look yep. at it. Yep. But, no, she does. She does. I mean, her dad basically told her to sh – you've seen that video. Yes. Huh? Basically told her to shut up. <laughs> take the good, you take the bad. And the ugly. Yeah. And uh, sit her down. Yeah. And he did say that, too. Yep. Dad wanted her bad. The facts are lie. The facts are lie. God, I hated that show, <laughs> Mrs. Dr Mrs. Drummond. I never really. You liked Mrs. Drummond though, didn't I you? I did. You, oh, God, I wanted her. Yeah. <laughs> no, I never watched. Which show. one was the facts? Of, was that the one? The facts. Of life. I get them all mixed up. Where the girls are living in the. That's right. In the house with yeah. uh, Charlotte, with Mrs. Drummond, Charlotte, Ray. Charlotte Ray. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what was going on in there. <laughs> Pillow fight. <laughs> you a big fan of facts, <laughs> facts of Life? Oh, is that the one with Nancy <laughs> yeah. McKeon or yeah. whatever yes. her name was? Yeah. yeah, Nancy McKeon. I didn't see that very often. I didn't either. I thought I she didn't. was kind of hot. Yeah, she yeah. never did it for me. Yeah. She's, she was in some police show, too, that was on TV when she grew up. She was a cop. Okay. okay. I woke up today at 2.30 in the morning and watch Cannon to go back to sleep. And it worked. I was back to sleep in 15 minutes. Didn't even see the end. I'll bet. Didn't see the end of the episode. I bet you didn't know how it ended. No, I was asleep. You knew how it ended, though. Well, he won. He got yeah. the guy. Yeah. And more than likely, he beat him up with his... when He, he, he belly like, punched him. I like yeah. him when he belly punches people. Yeah. Cannon. What well, Cube wanted Cannon to... to play three-on-three three with <laughs> Caitlin Clark. <laughs> well, the, Hey, I'd bet on Caitlin that you use whatever ball you want. <laughs> and William Conrad's been dead for how long? Didn't, he died like 30 years ago, didn't he? I think, I think so. he died in like 1994. Yeah. Yeah, so, but, but no, it's an interesting proposition. And we're going to see more stuff like this come up. It's, um, but yeah, I, if you just really examine it, I'm not sure if it would be the right move. Probably not. And I would wonder, I could, what do you think some of these former NBA players that are in these, what do you think they would think about her coming there? I think they'd bring her on. You think they would try to just crush her, or do you think they'd be 
Okay, you know, I think they, they're, they're competitive. They would try to keep her I, at I, zero. I think you're right. I I do wonder, though, if they'd be like, oh, this is kind of cute. Let's kind of... Let's. But what kind but the, of a that, show is it if no, you're right, they though. let her... That's what I'm saying. If they let her do stuff and shoot logo threes, and then it's not it's not genuine. It's, it's not real. It's not authentic. Right. Well, it would be rigged. Rigged. Hoax. Deep state. <laughs> no, but it would be rigged. <laughs> it would be rigged. And it would be... And they could get prosecuted and, for that. It would have to be Biden's fault because he's the president right now. <laughs> yeah. Caitlin's team would be the deep state conspiracies. Deep state conspiracies and QAnon and, you know, pedophiles and drinking blood. What about QAnon? What about I saw some interview with – it was those good liar guys. I, they go to these Trump things, and they're sitting there interviewing these people and ridiculing these people with their line of questions, and the people don't even realize it. And they, they had this lady talking about she's just convinced that, you know, that all the – Democratic, they that they rape babies and eat them and pray to Satan and and it, she was going on and on. This lady votes. Yeah, she is, votes. Yeah, that is the problem with democracy. Yes, that, <laughs> it is that, that everyone can vote. Yeah. Well, Good, the premise: everybody can vote. Yeah. I mean, this the lady, bad news. Everybody, everybody can, vote. can vote. This lady was out there with her stuff, man, and um, he kept talking about. Like the dockets, you know, when when judges release stuff on there, he's like, well, she's like, how do you know it was proven? Well, it's on his docket. He released it. She's like, oh, so you 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 think maybe his docket that she was saying the judge's dockets are fake news, and she and then he says, well, where do you get your news? And of course, four chan and H and you know, all that stuff. I mean, but those, I mean, those people vote, yeah. and it's a crazy, crazy, crazy time, and. I, the more I think about this, I blame it all on social media, almost all. I think social media has taken us to a level that we didn't envision. I, it's made it so easy to manipulate people. Don't you yeah, agree? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of good with social media, but there, there's just so much bad that comes from it, so much mind manipulation. Why are they blowing the sirens? <laughs> well, Is it happening? It did. I'm not, I didn't hear it. Did you? Oh, we have headphones oh, on. I, yeah. Did you hear it, Hunter? Hunter didn't hear it. I don't I think we'll hear it here. Oh, it would just be in Iowa City? When, well, the, the cities, I don't know where it's. Well, I've got that one siren that's right there on the corner of court and right by my house. I hear it loud. It's it's one of those tornado sirens. It's right there by the Casey's, by, you know, by mid, by Midtown. Yeah. There's one right there. So, but um, what do we have? Um, tonight we have... N- NIT games, we have got, I mean, obviously the NCAA games start again tomorrow. Right. Man, I can't wait for that Iowa State-Illinois game. It's going to be interesting to see who I cheer for in that game. Because every time I watch a game, eventually, as a human, you, it becomes clear you, to you. you clear. I don't know who I'm going to cheer for in that game. I, I don't know. Almost never when I'm watching a game do I not end up pulling for somebody. It's the same way. I think that's human nature. I, it must be. Yeah, and so that will be interesting now, going in, in my head, I, I would say, well, I'll, okay, go Illini. And that's hard for me to say because I don't like them. Yeah, and, but you hate Iowa State. But I really don't like Iowa State. I yeah. do like Iowa State's head coach. He seems like a yeah. good guy. Except for the way he dresses. Yeah, the, the sleeve. Stupid. The, the, well, and he does seem like he's in a flex during. Yeah, come on. I've had people say he looks more like a wrestling coach than a basketball coach, and he sort of does. Not, that's not a knock sort on wrestling does. coaches. But obviously he's done one whale of a job. Unbelievable how he's gotten his kids to buy into defense. Got great assistant coaches who know how to coach defense. That's going to be a hell of a game. I can't wait for it. It should be. And it starts at like 9.15. Well, it does really. Um, yeah, I think, is it Thursday or Friday? The Do you have the stuff in front of you? I thought it was th- Thursday. Yeah, I think Maybe it's yeah. it's, it's supposed to be nine oh five, but you know how that works, Tom. They never yeah. start. It could be nine twenty before yeah. that game starts, so it'll be over. Game over like at eleven thirty, twelve thirty on the East Coast. Well, yeah, and I'll be down in Miami. So, oh yeah, so um, um, but yeah, that's a good one. I I love this time of year. I mean, this the NCAA. For tournament, sure. I mean, it, it's got its. It's got its flaws in some ways. The selection committee this year, I think, made some bad calls. I mean, Virginia shouldn't have been in, but for the most part, it's a it's a cool event and it, it it's captivating. It it basically yep. holds our interest for close to a month. No, nothing else really does that. No, that's and then, true. And then the women, um, what's two thirty on? Is it two thirty on Saturday? Two thirty our time on Saturday. On Saturday, so it'll be three thirty down in Florida. And the wedding's at five, so 
I'll see maybe the first quarter. I, where is this, the big three, where do they, I've never seen it on television. I've seen it on ABC. Is it on ABC? Oh, yeah, I've seen it on national TV. I've never really watched it much. It's boring. I don't need to watch 35-year-old former NBA players playing three-on-three. It just doesn't work for me. And that's me. I Other people like it, great. More power to them. It's obviously, you've got to be a basketball freak to really get into it. Mm-hmm. But it's not it's not like John and Charlie and Stan from the local YMCA playing against two. These are f- mostly former NBA legitimate players. Listen, I love that one uh, commercial that she's in where at the end, uh, did somebody say old Pace? Reggie Miller? Yes, yeah, I yeah, that isn't that great? Miller. Yeah, it makes me feel old. <laughs> makes me feel old since I'm two years older than Reggie Miller. <laughs> it's a great commercial. Yes, Hello. It is. Uh, yeah, just a couple things. Uh, first, uh, I think other than baseball and March Madness, yeah, postseason is about a month for baseball and then March Madness. Mm-hmm. Uh, that month. Um, but then I've been seeing a lot. Uh, one of my social media friends posts often about sumo wrestling, like day 22 and everything like that. Is there something going on with world sumo wrestling, Dito? You know? <laughs> Not t- in my world. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> Hunter? Is there something going on with sumo wrestling? <laughs> Hunter's not aware either. Yeah, uh, I, 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 was just ask, I was just asking the sports guy. No, we'll but have yeah, to. So. Well, Karen's in church. We'll have to ask her because yeah. <laughs> she wants to know who's going to win the match. <laughs> yeah, who do you think is going to win the sumo win? championship? Uh, yeah, this one guy weighs seven hundred and twenty pounds, and this <laughs> this other guy. <laughs> no, I, I can honestly, I'm not a fan of sumo wrestling. Are you? No. Are you a fan of sumo wrestling? God, no. Captain, are you a fan of sumo? No. I'm not. Oh, yeah, I'm a big, huge fan. Yeah. Watch, they're going to reach out to Caitlin Clark to try to do sumo <laughs> <Yeah>. wrestling. <laughs> you imagine that? All right. All righty. Well, hey, have a good day. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. The sumo wrestling world show. I've, why, I, I just, it's basically they go out there and each one's kind of thrust each other with their guts, it's right? Just, yeah. It's, it's a leverage battle. It's, it's ridiculous. So, it is. <laughs> You're taking on entire culture and condemning you bet. it. <laughs> Hello. Good morning, gentlemen. It's John Ball. Hey, John. Hi, John. Now, here's Wait. a sumo wrestling uh, fan. Uh, huge. Yeah, yeah, I could see you sumo wrestling, Steve. That would be quite a sight. <laughs> I got your first <laughs> opponent, too. <laughs> hey, just uh, weigh in on Kalen and the uh, referee and all the other stuff. Uh, I've watched it for watched it for three years, you know, and she has toned it down considerably from her early years. But yeah, you're right; she's still, you know, I mean, she's emotional, but they yeah. beat the hell out of her. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just that she simple. Does. They, yep. She they doesn't. Do. She doesn't get, you know, and and I know some people think she charges a lot with her offhand. She doesn't do it a lot. She does it some, not a lot. And I figure that she's doing it to try to get separation. Well, that's what she's doing, well, of course. And if they're not going to call it, you do it. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And, you know, I there's a lot of haters out there, as we know, and uh, that's part of the deal. They they want to see see her fail, some of them. But, uh, you know, that's that's too bad. Uh, we, she's been a, obviously a joy to watch for these last three years. She and, sure uh, has been. That, that team is, is really terrific when you think about it. But, you know, I was watching Ariama or whatever the hell his name is. Do you know Ariama? Yeah, from Connecticut. He was spouting off, you know, and obviously Paige Beckers is a very good player, but you know, one thing is different with them than, than I was Paige Beckers is surrounded with great players. We have good players. We don't have great four and five star players surrounding Kalen. So mm-hmm. I think it's a little, I think it's a horse of a different color when you're yeah, Paige Beckers is not as good as Caitlin Clark and maybe no. I'm biased, but she's just not. No, she's and, a great well, player coming out of high school. I w- uh, would disagree with she was rated higher. Oh, well, yeah, yeah but she's she rated higher by you know, media guys. I mean, yeah. she was number yeah. one. Caitlin was number three. But I thought from the moment I saw them both play as freshmen, I'm like, Caitlin's yeah. better. She's yeah. just a more I, dynamic, more well-rounded player. Yeah, I thought the same thing, Pat. And I just, you know, uh, and I, I, of course, I, I admire Caitlin for staying in the state. You know, Beckers is from Minnesota, and she, uh, you know, opted to leave Minnesota. Mm-hmm. She could have had her own platform in Minnesota. She could have. I. I was at, uh, not this year, but last year at the Big Ten tournament, I was sitting next to a Minnesota fan. Yeah. And he was kind of bitter about Caitlin. He said, yeah, we could have had the same thing at Minnesota with Paige. And I said, yeah, but she didn't because she left. (laughs) Well, plus Minnesota wasn't as good 
as Iowa was when both of those girls were coming into uh, college. That's so true. I mean, Iowa was a power because of yes. Megan Gustafson. Yeah. And right. that was a big sure. difference with Caitlin. Yep. Oh, I, I agree. No, that's no question. But I, I'll always give her credit. I'll always admire her for staying. Uh, me too. Respect her greatly. Yeah, because she had that. she was seriously considering Notre Dame, and oh, I know. I read I where think. I, uh, I read where I think her mom actually wanted her to go to Notre they're, they're, Dame. Very, very religious so. family. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know, and I think she might have even verbally had might have. Because she made the comment one time that she, you know, she caused Luke close to blue to her a heart attack twice. <laughs> the first first time when she didn't, she, you know, she said she maybe it was not coming. And the second time, yes, I am coming. So. Yeah, and I don't know if she would have picked Iowa without the Elite Eight run by Gustafson. And I think that's what I, I, finally proved to her that she yeah, can do it. And she has said that, yeah. that Megan Gustafson showed that it could be done. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what she said on the radio. Yeah. And I think yeah. if not for that, she would have been at Notre Dame. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, so, but it, I'll always respect her for that. Sure. And, uh, yep. You know that's that's the beauty of, beauty of it and everything. But Colorado presents a real challenge. I watched them play Kansas State. I was hoping Kansas State would win, frankly, because I thought our matchup would might be a little better with them. Well, I don't know. Two two we bigs haven't... are are tough. I think. Why are they only a five seed? I don't know. But did you watch? Have to watch that? I game? have not. No. Yeah, I yeah, I did. I, you know. It, K-State hasn't been a particularly good matchup for us, so I'm going to have to no, disagree with you a little that. bit. Yeah, no, I realize that, Tom, and I, and I fully appreciate what you're saying there, too. I just thought we had – we had, and, of course, we played Colorado last year, but they have two tall young ladies that are that play at the same time. I can't they, remember. How that, close was the game last year against Colorado? Ten, I think. Ten, okay. Ten. They were – I think they were hit by one at halftime or something like that. Okay. Yeah. No, it was a well, competitive game. Yeah, and, and it will be this time, too, but – We've got a veteran team, and uh, you know I think that's the kind of a key factor here is that our senior leadership will stand out again. But we have to have more scoring from the other uh, the other uh, ladies because yeah. we can't have uh, Gabby going. Well, goose we got z- zero points from the bench. Well, she Caitlin scored Literally. thirty. Caitlin scored yeah. thirty-two of their sixty-four points. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, they can't keep winning that way. I don't. No, think. no, I don't either. I just you know, and the other person that's. Is disappointed, and I certainly like the young ladies. Addie Hill Brady, she just really, she got in the other night, and she was totally ineffective, and they had yanked yeah. her right out. And mm-hmm. They they need they she needs to produce. She, she shows really flashes. Needs. She does. She, she does. does at times, but yeah, then it seems like she takes one step forward, then one step back. She had fourteen yeah. points the other day and looked good yeah. doing it, and then she looked completely overmatched. I think the quick. The I game. think she couldn't handle the quickness. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree with you, Pat, totally. So, anyway, well, gentlemen, it's going to be fun. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll have a competitive game, I'm sure. Tom, you have fun down in Florida. I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> we'll try to hold the fort for you here. So. You do that. Get us All into right. the final four. That, that's the goal, for All sure. Right. All right. Thanks, gentlemen. Have a great day. See you. I mean, there were a couple times where Caitlin – struggled with their quickness like a couple times she could not get past that guard number 11 and then the guard for some reason reached in and fouled her and kind of bailed her out but she was struggling to get by her because they were so quick no that's a that's a good and and we've said before caitlin is an incredibly skilled basketball player but she's not overly quick and explosive she's just not that i mean she's tall but she's not rarely one of the quicker players on the court she's just not but she's just so skilled with both hands and whatever, she can kind of compensate for what maybe she doesn't have quickness wise. And plus, she has the, the vision where. Yeah, her vision's her best thing. Yeah, where she can get an edge on. She knows when she can get an but edge on. But there's a on. lot of guards that are quicker than her. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, and that's. And, but she's learned to adjust to that. So um, it's, 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 it's cool to see how she sees the floor and she can maybe make up for what she doesn't have quickness wise with her eyes and her anticipation and what yep, have you. So yep. I think they're going to beat Colorado. I, I think, um, God, I just wonder if they're going to be on another collision course with South Carolina. The thing with South Carolina though, they're not being tested. I mean, if you can just keep, stay close to them, they may freeze like they did last year. Well, Tennessee almost beat them. Yeah, that was in the. But I'm saying in the, their first two NCAA tournament games have just been. Oh no, blowouts. Just been complete. But they beat North Carolina by, was it like 91 to 41? Yeah, it was terrible. They beat them by like 50 points. But that doesn't really. Yes, you advance and you move on with a little worry. But to me, that doesn't get you ready for a game where you get pushed. Like I think when Iowa 
didn't back down from them. I don't think South Carolina had an answer last year. They just no. didn't. Now, this year they got a different roster. They went out and got better shooters. I think that loss convinced Don Staley we got to get shooters. Yeah. And uh, they have done that, so we'll see. And I don't think Indiana can stay with South Carolina oh, I don't either. at all. No, I, I, I don't either. Is that who they play? Uh-huh. What, when's that game? Uh, it's on my birthday. March 29th, 4 p.m. Uh, Central time. Okay. Yeah, these next two weeks are going to be a lot of fun. This fun time here. Then Iowa baseball. Do you have the baseball schedule in front of you, Tom? I do. Don't they play their home opener, Big Ten opener this weekend? They do. On my birthday. Who's it against? Friday, March 29th. (laughs) Minnesota. Minnesota. Oh, that's right. I'm going to reach out to try to get the coach on. We'll try to get him on Friday's show. The Minnesota baseball coach? Yeah. I'm yeah, kidding. Greg, yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah, no, get him on. Would you want him on? What if we get him on and he just won't shut up? <laughs> you know, he's, hey, where's the menu? He does a little pre- He does a little prep and where's the menu? he starts asking you about G.G. Yeah. Allen. The menus. Menus. Yeah, I listen to you guys all the time. Yep. Menus, G.G. Surprise, those uh, French uh, journalists didn't ask about that. I sat next to those guys in the in Crestville. They were nice guys. That was, that yeah, was, they were good. I, I really looked, nice I looked guys. forward to yeah. seeing the finished product. Yeah. Because they were working their asses off at that game, and it was so hot in that arena. Yeah, it sure was. It's as hot you know, as I remember. The finish, I imagine. Yeah, the they're going to – they're gonna. he's going to reach out. I gave him my contact information. Oh, he's cool. going to reach out and let us know. I think they're going to send us maybe a, a copy of it. I don't know because obviously we don't – do you get French TV? No, I don't think so. Do you get it in your? Oh, yes. Ooh la la. Yeah, I watching. figured you guys had some French streaming service. <laughs> but, no, they said they'd let us know when it's done. They said it would take a couple months and what have you. But they were just really nice guys. It was interesting. But I didn't understand. I thought they wanted to come in and promote themselves. They just wanted to come I, in and shoot us doing the show. Yeah, I yeah. thought that they, I wanted, thought they wanted to, to pro- no, but be a part of the no, show. No, they were they. No, they didn't which, want But, no, it was, it was neat having they them said, there. After the menus, they said, I don't want to no, be a part of live, it. No, we can't, we can't live up to this. <laughs> You didn't tell us you had giants on this show. <laughs> Did they hear the menus? Were the, were the menus I, I read hope. while they were here? Uh, I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. Were they? Yeah. What did they? But what? we weren't out. Pat and I weren't out. No. no. Was, so they were waiting for us, like out there when the menus came out. Do you think yes. they even paid any attention to it? I hope not. I mean, Did they ask you about the menus? Uh, no. I turned you guys on this morning when I woke up, and you were on with him. And you were asking him questions about sex, and I turned the radio off. Sorry. You were asking him the last time he did it, and I just, I just, it's hard to. Did I ask him? Yes, and you were, and he was talking about how his girlfriend doesn't have a mattress. No, and she I, has a mattress. And I about hurled. She doesn't have a bed. Yeah, I about hurled. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with me? Yeah, you. No. You. No, Hunter, help me on this one. <laughs> what do you think of that little conversation with Menu Boy? <laughs> I don't. I, you can go in a you lot of directions need. with him. Why does it have to become sexual? That's all I ask. Suter, don't you agree with? I know you love Justin, but you don't need to hear the sex part, do you? Oh, or do you yeah, get... I do. Because <laughs> it, it, there's always a surprise there, and it's uh, well, we didn't really a little talk bleak about, usually about sex. A little bleak usually. That's the understatement. It of was the... it all about sex? No, I think you were. I asking... mean, okay, sex with his cousin was a little concerning. Well, that was concerning. I didn't like hearing that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Three way <laughs> with his uh, baby mama and his didn't very like... very homely third party. <laughs> didn't like hearing that either. Didn't need to hear that. I did not need to hear about that three-way. Southern Justin packing serious heat. It's another. You know I have a weak stomach. That was his big three. <laughs> big, big one three. I'm not even going to. We're not even. We're not bringing Caitlin Clark into this discussion. No, we're no, not doing that. I have that. never done that. We're not doing that. That I have never done. But um, but hey, you know, he's he's America's other cultural phenomenon, <laughs> Caitlin Clark and Southern Justin. Not a good culture. <laughs> and I um, oh yeah, you guys were talking about him showering, and he didn't need to well, shower. Well, he said it, that, that how do you impress a, a woman, and he said you shower every day. Shower, wear nice shoes, and brush your teeth. And he's got you know, I mean, he only has to worry about the bottom teeth. Yeah. So it's a little easier. Yeah, it's easier for him. I mean, I would like to hear He's from... has got an advantage. I would like to hear from the women in our crowd, you know, is having two, you know, upper and lower teeth impressive? Is yeah, that is better? That, well, is that important in a relationship? I think it is. I think it should be. 
It but maybe matters. it isn't. It matters. Yeah. Maybe but, I have assumed wrongly. Well, you're only saying that because you spent all this money on Yeah, but I still, I, I, I still got to do work on the lower part, but yeah. I will do that at some point. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, teeth are part of it, I guess. Showering every day, I can honestly say I don't shower every day. Yeah, do you shower every day? I don't. Yes. I don't. I shower every day. I, I hit every other day. I mean, if I sweat, well, yeah, if I, then yeah. I will shower. Sure, uh, yeah, but I don't necessarily Wash shower. Wash my hair and shower, and a lot of days I also take a bath. Oh, God, I don't. I haven't taken a bath in 50 years. Since I was bath 10 bath. years old. So gross. You sit in hot water. You sit in your own smegma. That's well, just I don't have smegma. Disgusting. I've already showered. So you take a shower and then go sit in the bathtub? What, do you just like to be naked by yourself? I like the, the hot water on my back and stuff. It feel uh, I've got arthritis. All right. It feels good to just sit there. Baths are gross. And, and contemplate. Baths are well, I gross. completely agree. I, 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 I think I contemplate hot tubs are gross. Yeah. I've never been a hot tub fan. You're sitting yeah. in there with a bunch of other. They're just, they, they, they feel good. I but, mean, they feel good. And, yeah, but. but. Mm, mm. <laughs> Jesus. You got all. A lot of issues. I got some issues, and they usually have to do with germs. <laughs> now, it depends on who you're sitting in the hot tub with. You well, know, if I mean, you're not dirty, you, you don't know. If I'm sitting in the hot tub with Anne, Hath- if I'm sitting in a hot tub with Anne Hathaway, I'm doing okay. If I'm in there with Randy Quaid, I'm not liking it. Does that happen a lot? No, Does, no, I've Anne never, Hathaway? never been able to get Anne. Ha- hi, Anne. Oh, well, hi, Pat. Been, I've never been able to get Anne Hathaway into a hot tub, but <laughs> hey. I've always had the hots for her. Hi, Pat. Come on in. <laughs> Is that Ann asking me or Randy? Ann. Okay. I, I, I would get in. I would. Yeah, Pat, in. you buying? <laughs> Randy's eyes. Hey, this hot tub. Randy's <laughs> eyes are just floating on his face. I, I'd be like, hey, this hot tub's rigged. <laughs> Woke. Woke. <laughs> no, I've always had a thing for Ann Hathaway. There's just something about her. Just... Isn't she a little nutty, too? Isn't she a little different? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Nutty's not the right. Does she have kind of an edge to her? Well, yes. Yeah, Nutty's not like, the right word. She doesn't like to be pushed around. I mean, I mean, she she's sultry, and she does yeah. not like being in hot tubs with sports writers. Oh, that's, she has that's, come out uh, in a she has said that firm All stance. Right. Yes. All right. But I could say, well, I'm also a radio guy. Will that get me in? That'll help. <laughs> that will help. <laughs> she's like radio. What's that? <laughs> Look at hotter than me. <laughs> but no, I've always okay. Heard. How about uh, I own a couple of uh, websites, sports websites? Maybe that is a sports website. Well, she, Come I'm on, on in. Yeah. I'm on X. <laughs> Why don't you try that. But I've always had the hots for her. Don't you think she's sexy? <laughs> yes. Anne Hathaway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Her and Scarlett Johansson. Those are Scar Jo. Very much. I, so. Yes, I like Scarlett Johansson, but I've never been, something about her. Never been attracted mm. to her. You're not attracted to Scarlett Johansson? No. Wow. No. Oh, man. And she uh, is not attractive to me. Oh, I, I'm, I'm aware of that. Yeah. But um, she did a good job of, of doing the, the Katie Britt. She was excellent. She was, I didn't think she had that in her. No, I didn't she, she had was. That. She was good at that. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't that think that. Saturday night. I didn't yeah, think she had that. that good. I didn't think she had that sense of humor in her. But no, that was good. Yeah. Well, she. Well, and everybody. I mean, the minute, with Colin Jost. The so minute, her husband, isn't it? Are they married? Yeah, I yeah. think they're married. Yeah. But the minute that uh, Britt came out and did that, you know, rebuttal, I mean, within maybe two or three minutes, people are going, oh, this is going to be the opening skill oh, Saturday Night Yes, I did And see that. that's what's really good about SNL. <laughs> yeah. They are all over those things, and but they're generally really good. Didn't yeah. Trump want to shut down SNL? Yes. Yeah. You know, they always sit there and talk about cancel culture. I mean, Trump wants to cancel as much as anybody. When Trump was a host one time. Yeah, and it was well, terrible. They, it wasn't good. It was yeah. not good. They, uh, you know, they fired uh, Ronna, whatever. McDaniel. They, yeah, McDaniel, uh, after they hired her, which was just the stupidest idea. You know, I mean, and they've got Republican people to come in and rebut stuff, and, mm-hmm. and that's fine, and that's what they should do. But to hire somebody that's ripped the hell out of your hosts... And you know, and your network, yeah. you know, why would you? Yeah, you shouldn't. No. Well, I think they're trying to show some form of objectivity, and but yeah, that was not a good move. Well, There's other people you could have hired. Yeah, there are a lot of other people. She I did mean, call the Michigan. She was on that phone call. Yeah. Trying. No, there's a lot of other Republicans 
you uh, that they have and that you could hire. And to think they were going to pay her three hundred thousand. I know in the big scheme, that's not a lot of money to them. But that to the average American, that's a crap load of money. That is three hundred thousand dollars a year. So, but yeah, I do, and, but that doesn't compare. Maybe Ronna will. Maybe Ice Cube will reach out to Ronna McDaniel see if she'll play in the on three. She can be the announcer. She can be the announcer. But no, it'll be interesting to see what Caitlin says when she's asked about that. You know she's going to be asked yeah, about it. Well, it should be. And should be. Yes, it'll be it'll, fun. It'll be a make. It'll make for a neat story yeah. for everyone to write. Yeah. And she'll answer it well. And um, I'm not sure what she'll say, but I'm, my guess is she'll say I'm flattered by the offer and what have you. But it's Cube. I, it's Cube and yeah. Um, yeah. So. I, I don't know. I, I'm with you guys, though. I think in the long run, it probably wouldn't be the wisest thing. No, I don't you know, think so. A lot of these rappers, like Cube and like 50, 50, 50 Cent. 50. 50. Yeah, 50 Cent. I mean, you, you get beyond the the recording BS and all the gangster crap. And, you know, if, if some have that, uh, you know, like 50 is a great actor. He just is. I've a, seen him in a couple of movies. I don't know if I he say was on great. A t- he put together a TV series that was excellent. It didn't get numbers. But I don't know that, that I've seen Fitty. I saw him in, was it Waist Deep? Is that the I one? never saw that. I saw him in one, um, and he was okay. I mean, he's not Steven Seagal, but he's not no, Robert but De Niro. I think that's one of the, well, he's Steven Seagal. I'm Steven Seagal. Well, oh, in, in fairness to him, the guy had a good thing going in the 80s and 90s. Those movies used to. Yeah. They were stupid, but he now, he's, a, now Russian, he's in Russia. Yeah, he's a Russian <laughs> citizen. I mean, he's a huge fan of it's Russia. Good for him. <laughs> yeah, and, good and he could be a sumo. Goodbye. Yeah. He has gotten big. Yeah. Anyone seen Richie? <laughs> Out for justice. Where's Richie? <laughs> You're like Rich Little. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. Voice impersonation. John Viner. Yeah. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> yep. <laughs> That's great. Trying to think if we covered everything. Um, who does softball play this weekend? Uh, softball hosts Michigan State. Okay. They won their first. Well, both baseball and softball both won their Big Ten opening series, which is always good. Track, I see, is ranked 17th outdoors right now. So a lot of good. I've actually had some people reach out to me and say they really appreciated the track interviews. because oh, they're, like, they're like, you know, I um, you can't hear that any other I mean, track athletes at Iowa don't get a lot of attention because they don't have any home meets. You can't watch yeah. them. No, that's right. There's no, there's no process of getting acquainted with them. So that's why I appreciate Iowa helping to arrange those interviews. Because no, well, I they mean, deserve a spot. They do. They deserve. I mean, we talked to an NCAA champion, and I thought it went well. I thought you know, Rivaldo had never done a radio interview before, but I thought for the most I part, thought he was good. I thought he was good. I did too. Yeah. No, I enjoyed it. And same thing with Kalen Walker. It's going to be interesting to see what they do this. Do this spring now. I mean, they've got a. I mean, track's been. I mean, now it's to the point where if track finishes below third in the Big Ten, you're like, whoa, what happened? Yeah. And think about that. Well, Joey's done a. He's hell done a hell of a, hell job. of a job. He's done a heck of a job. So, um, trying to think if that's. I think that's about everything. Got any music stuff to? What's up with Roger Waters? <laughs> Tommy's got something. What do you got, Tommy? I'm, I'm doing research from a show, doing my music research and my, my radio prep, as some people would call it. I did not know this. You probably did, Pat. Didn't, I thought of you right away. Uh, so the Grateful Dead are putting out the 50th anniversary re-release I saw that. Uh, from the Mars Hotel mm-hmm. later this year, June 21st. And the accompanying photo on the Rolling Stone website, under the caption, it just says, At the Iowa State Fair, 1974. I did not know the Grateful Dead played the state fair. They did. My brother-in-law was there, and he said it went on for nine hours. <laughs> and they played three songs. It sounds they played, right. they yeah, played all day. Da- they played all day. Oh, I believe that. I'm kidding, of course. But, no, he was there, and he said it just went on forever. Yeah. He loved it. Huh. I have I'll never understood. Got I to think of that 50. The one concert that I 50 years ago. worked at, and they started St. Stephen, and I knew that it was St. Stephen, and then... They never stopped playing, and I never knew what the hell they were playing after that. And it was just... See, that to me is, is not entertaining. Yes, it was to me it was ridiculous because I wanted, you know... It was entertaining to a lot of people. It was, well, yeah. I mean, their concerts were always packed. They made millions. No, it was packed. There were times when songs went on too long, and there were some, like St. Stephen, that's not one of my favorite songs. I no. Mean, I, but um, 
I but, could listen to a live, long version of Uncle John's Band forever. Love Uncle John's Band. And I've listened to some great live versions of Uncle John's Band at Alpine Valley that went on for like 20 minutes and loved every second of it. Behind the stage, and I'm not kidding, they had a gigantic bowl. You know, and I mean like a gigantic bowl just filled to the top with ruffles. For Jerry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Probably. Uh, yeah. I like ruffles. I do too. Yeah. I oh, prefer yes. regular ones, but I, I like I, ruffles. I like I prefer they regular have ones too. Bridges. But I, I mean I, I, I it was like it was a gigantic bowl. I never seen a bowl. My favorite Jerry moment though is when he and Bob Weir were on Letterman right after Touch of Grey came out and yeah. Dave kept making fun of him for having a top forty song. <laughs> yeah. and Jerry's like, Yeah, you know, what do you do? You know? <laughs> yeah. He's like, Hey, you guys are at seven right now. You're in between let's see, you're in between like Berlin or um, and Jerry's just, and he just kept making fun of him for having a top forty song. <laughs> and I remember Bob Weir's like, God, I feel like a failure. <laughs> Dave was just having fun. Cause the, and Touch of Grey was a huge hit. Giant hit. That was a good song. I liked it. I mean, it yeah. wasn't one of my favorite Dead songs, but it probably made them more money than any other it song. Probably maybe. Did by far, God, probably. I mean, didn't it chart in the top ten? Yes. I mean, it was on all the time. Plus, it was a video, too, on MTV. It was still MTV was on. I think Touch of Grey came out in 87. If and I it remember. was perfect for them. It really was perfect for them at that point. Mm-hmm. moment in time i just thought it was funny though that jerry just yeah yeah top 40 what do you do <laughs> most bands would just dream to have something like that i miss letterman yeah. i don't watch late i don't watch late night no any of them i think tommy does but i don't i'm not knocking them i just don't have any interest i, I mean yeah, i haven't watched much late night tv since Gosh, Carson. to think that i used to watch letterman religiously from 11 30 to 12 remember when he was on it wasn't he on at 11 30 to begin with i don't know that yeah, one time he was on 11 30 on nbc yeah and then went to see i used to watch him i mean i you know i used to stay up that late and watch him we were on the road for a, a lot of his for, years, yeah he so. started in 82 he started my um senior year of high school so but um yeah, you looking up what touch a great chart of that number one okay Number one. Maybe that maybe they were at on number one at that. Extreme Rock number one uh, peaked at number nine on Hot One Hundred. Number nine. Number nine. Number uh, nine. Yeah, biggest biggest success. And Dave was letting them have it, making fun of them. <laughs> <laughs> and see, Jerry, Jerry obviously had issues, but I've never heard anyone say that he was not a nice guy. No. I've no, heard he I've was, said that he was just the nicest guy I you had could imagine. Like a five second interaction with him, if, if, if that. But he was just where was this super nice uh, backstage of the concert. Did he, he have a bag it? of chips in his hand? He had no. He had this gigantic bowl. Did he have a syringe in his arm? No. Oh, okay, that's what hurt him. No. So was this in the Quad Cities? No, it was in Wisconsin. Okay, but no, I've just re- everything I've read. Everyone's just the nicest guy in the world. And that's always good to hear because it seems like with a lot of musicians, the more you read about them, they turn out to be dicks. Yeah. With a lot of them. Yeah, he, he wasn't. No, he definitely was not. Good to know. Yeah. Definitely was not. Yeah. So um, He said, I would dine from that germ jar. Oh, Jerry probably would. Oh, he would have absolutely <laughs> gorged out of the germ jar. Just turned it upside down. <laughs> What if I would tell him about all the germs in there? What do you think he would say? All right. Bring it on. I live for smegma. <laughs> you can eat those last six. You know, I forgot. I should have re- I should have reached out. I'll reach out to Adam. I should have re- I forgot to reach out to Adam. It would have been good to get him. I'll try to get him on Friday. Um, cause you don't have an auction coming up for a couple more weeks now, right? No, I think it's like the 19th okay. or okay. something like that. Uh, cause you're not going to be here Friday, right? No. All right. I'll try to reach out to Adam, see if we can get him on Friday. I should have tried to get him on today. I will try and make sure, Mr. Suter, that Pat does not allude to your alcohol use uh, too much on this show while you're going. And what's ironic about this, Tom, is he usually brings it up, <laughs> hoping to stir, to, hoping to get Tommy and I going. Isn't that right, Tommy? No. He brings it up. Don't believe him. He brings it up, and then he Fake wait, news. He, he waits for us to take it to another level. Just remember, we've got apps. <laughs> yeah. Remember, 
I got a knob on this more that can turn those apps off. <laughs> well, that's true, too. I would like to think when you're down in Florida, you won't be needing to listen to us. I w- I, yeah, I hope not. You'll be on I your hope own. I have Just better do, things to do. Rid yourself of us. You don't you need us. Better things to better do. Better than damn right he does. I would, I would hope so. How would you have a better walk, thing to do? I'll walk on the beach. Yeah. Let the sand squeeze between your toes. You gonna do and that? Listen to Southern Justin read the menus. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> or if you're lucky, maybe they'll get into a little conversation about his sex life. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> you're something else. I'm something else. Yeah. Now I would yeah. say that maybe it's time for us to, <laughs> I, to we gotta call exit him. here. Hey, let, let's let. Oh, uh, did you hang up on him? Uh, no, they hung up. Hmm. Yeah. All right, well, everybody, um, enjoy the weather. It looks like it's going to be a little nicer. A little cooler, or cool, but no wind, right? Yeah, Yeah. no no wind, no, no rain, no more precip for a while, well, right? it's got 10 miles, 10, 15 we're, miles an hour. I mean, we got enough water recently. We're, not, we're no longer in a drought, are we? I, I would think not. Yeah. I We've had a lot of rain lately, so yeah. we need some. And it's, I did see back more high 50s and 60s coming up here in the next few days, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. God, then before you know it, it's going to be April. And what's weird is, is this Caitlin Clark stuff is great. Win or lose, it's going to be over in like two weeks. Yeah. You know? I mean, it, it, there's. Or faster. Or faster. <coughs> so cherish the time, everyone. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Police reports are next. Hawkfanatic.com. Check it out.